हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंस एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई गुवाहाटी नाउ इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स व्हाट यू आर गोइंग टू ऑपरेट इन टू द इन टू अ कॉमन बायोलॉजी एज वेल एज द केमिस्ट्री लेबोरेटरीज एंड वॉट आर द प्रिकॉशंस यू शुड टेक वाइल यू आर ऑपरेटिंग दीज इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एंड हाउ यू कैन बी एबल टू मेनटेन दीज इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स so the first thing what we are going to discuss about is the liquid handling system so when in any biology laboratory or even in the chemistry laboratories you have to use the different types of uh, uh, the different types of liquid handling systems like the these are the systems which you are going to use to dispense the different amounts of the liquids and let's see what are the different uh, liquid handling system you have you have the disposable pasture pipette and disposable pasture pipettes are um, mainly been used to dispense the semi quantity small volume liquids like from 1 to 10 ml and it is normally been used to transfer the liquid from one vessel to another vessel instead of adding the you know very quantitative or accurate amount of uh, liquid and then you have the calibrated pipettes so if a quantitative transfer of a specific and accurate volume of liquid is required you can use the calibrated glass pipettes apart from the calibrated pipette you also have the automatic pipetting system so for most quantitative transfers including many identical same volume transfers a mechanical microliter pipetter is ideal this allows the accurate precise and rapid dispensing of fixed volume from 1 to 5 ml so these are the uh, multiple options what you have when you are talking about the liquid handling systems and let's understand how this liquid handling systems are actually withdrawing the liquids and the uh, dispensing the liquids so in a typical uh, uh, system or suppose i have taken an example of the bulb uh, the rubber bulb what you have is a Uh, actually a uh, rubber bulb where you, this end you are going to connect the pipettes and how the rubber bulb is going to work in the step 1 uh, you are going to use your thumb and the four finger to press the valve a which means the bulb actually you are going to press and that actually is going to squeeze the air from this uh, pipette filler so that actually is going to make the bulb compressed and in the step 2 you are going to connect the pipette to this and then you are going to insert the pipette into the liquid and then you press the valve s as soon as you press the valve s you are actually going to allow this particular valve to draw the liquid from the uh, liquid uh, from the from the liquid vessel with the help of the suction and then when in the step 3 you are going to Uh, press the valve e so once you press the valve e you are actually going to expel the liquids from the pipette what you have withdrawn because when you press the bulb a or press uh, valve a you are actually going to expel the uh, air and when you connect the pipette and dip it into the liquid it is actually going to draw the liquid and then if you press the valve e you are actually going to release some amount of vacuum and as a result the the liquid is going to be dispensed from your uh, pipette and then step 4 because the last drop of the uh, material will remain into the pipette you have to uh, pr press the valve e uh, and cover the e inlet with the middle finger and squeeze the small amount of the bulb so that that's a these are the four steps in the four steps what i have tried to explain you is that irrespective of the different liquid handling systems whether it is the calibrated pipette or pasture pipette or the automatic uh, pipetting system uh, you are actually simply using the different type different ways to generate the vacuum and then with the help of this vacuum you are actually drawing the liquid and then ultimately you are releasing the vacuum and once you release the vacuum the liquid will dispense into a another vessel so with this uh, i would like to uh, show you some of the uh, different types of liquid handling system and how to maintain that pipette hello everybody this is dr vishal trivedi from department of biosciences and bioengineering and today i am going to introduce you to the liquid handling systems 
so in this series uh, first we are going to show you the automatic pipettes so the automatic pipettes are being used to handle the very liquid, small amount of liquid to very large quantity of liquids and that's why the these uh, uh, automatic uh, micro pipettes are coming into the different volumes for example you have a micro pipette which is from the 0.2 to 2 microliter so this pipette is always been used uh, in the range of 0.2 to 2 microliter and the minimum what you can dispense from this pipette is the 0.2 microliter and the 2 microliter for the practical purposes as well as for uh, considering that the handling might have some uh, errors this pipette is never been used uh, less than the 0.5 microliter similarly we have the uh, 2 to 20 microliter pipette so in the 2 to 20 microliter pipette you have the minimum what you can dispense using this is 2 microliter and the maximum is 20 microliter and in the same same way you have the 20 to 200 microliter pipette and the uh, 100 to 1000 microliter pipette and as well as for larger volume sometime you can also use the 0.5 to 5 ml pipette now for any uh, most of these uh, micro pipettes what you could see is that you have the a plunger through which actually goes in and out and that actually creates a, a vacuum within this tube and by creating the vacuum into this tube it actually allows the sucking of the liquid so uh, the if you see the dial the dial is always saying the some number so what you have to do is you have to so for example this is right now it is showing the 200 uh, as the number which means it is actually at set as the 200 microliter so suppose i want to uh, the uh, i want to uh, 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 dispense the 100 microliters then what i can do is i can use this uh, top knob and i can just uh, set it to the 100 microliter by rotating it the uh, clockwise and once it reaches to the 100 marks then you are set that you have set the suction pressure of this plunger to the 100 microliter which means when you press this pump when you press this uh, plunger it is actually going to suck the 100 microliter air into the tube and because the uh, the pipette is connected to a tip the tip is also going to suck the 100 microliter of the liquid so let's see how we are going to use this pipette to dispense the liquids and what are the different precautions you have to take so depending on these pipettes uh, you have the different types of tips for example for 0.2 to 2 microliter you have the micro tips then you have the uh, the uh, micro tips uh, which are in, in the range of the 2 to 20 microliter or 200 to um, 2 to 200 microliter and then you have the uh, bigger tips which can go uh, up to uh, 100 microliter to 1 ml so now i am going to demonstrate you how you can be able to dispense or how you can be able to withdraw the liquid utilizing these micro pipettes and what are the precautions you have to take so when you want to connect these tips what you have to do is that you bring the tips to the uh, to the pipette to the tip then what you have to do is you have to uh, push it really hard and then you have to ensure that it is properly been connected because ultimately you have to generate a vacuum into this tube so if there will be anything which is leaky or is this tip is not properly connected it is actually going to suck up the liquid or suck up the air from the outside and that's how it is actually going to give you the uh, the error error prone uh, uh, water uh, uh, error prone uh, liquid uh, handling so once you are sure that it is properly been connected what you can do is you can uh, take your liquid okay and you have to ensure that you should not submerge this whole tip into the liquid what you have to do is you take your uh, uh, bottle dip this the end of this tip and then you have to suck while you are doing this sucking as well as the dispensing of the liquid what you have to do is what you see is this plunger actually goes up to the end of this tube okay and then it stops 
so this is the place where you have to stop if you force if you push it forcefully you could be able to generate even the higher vacuum uh, than the what is being set so for example if i am setting at 100 microliter if i press the little hard i could be able to generate the vacuum which is equivalent to the 120 or 130 microliter which means the liquid what you are going to suck by doing the forced uh, uh, push you are going to suck the higher amount of liquid so that's why you have to be very careful when you push this uh, uh, plunger it should stop at that point and then only you should start sucking so what you have to do is you first push it up to the lock period then you bring it the uh, the tip the fine tip of the end of the tip and then bring it into the liquid and then slowly you have to release the plunger you should not release the plunger in a very very fast mode because if you do so then also the amount of liquid what you are going to uh, uh, withdraw is going to be lesser than the uh, the your desired amount okay so you have to be very careful that you should push the uh, the uh, plunger up to the lock period lock position then you have to suck it very slowly without uh, submerging your tip end okay once you have the when you once you have sucked the liquid into the tip then you have to dispense this liquid and when you dispense this liquid you have to ensure that you suck goes up to the lock period and then you have to push little hard because by doing so you will be able to dispense the last drop of the liquid from the tip so also one more precaution what you have to take while you are taking the liquid out from the bottle or some reservoir is that if you see there are some water particles which are going to be attached outside the surface of this tip so that you have to wipe up so that you should not uh, have any liquid which is outside the tip and then you dispense as i said you dispense and then you see the last drop is still there which act, which means that you are actually going to do the under uh, dispensing so to dispense the last drop you have to push little harder beyond the, uh, the lock period apart from these uh, precautions uh, because uh, most of these micro pipettes are using the spring and uh, the spring is present into the body of the pipette you also have to take a lot of precautions when you are actually this withdrawing the corrosive liquids for example if you are uh, withdrawing the uh, strong acid strong base or the organic solvents so most of these pipettes are having a rubber gasket at the end of this tube and uh, that rubber gasket is very sensitive for the uh, the organic solvents as well as when you are uh, taking uh, the media or other kind of uh, microbiology uh, stuff you also have to be ensured that the, you should not suck these liquids or the vapor inside this tube so that it should not get contaminated so that bacteria will start growing into this tube apart from that when you are withdrawing the corrosive uh, liquids for example the strong acid or the strong base you have to ensure that you are going to use the tips with the filters as well as you have to ensure that you should not suck this liquid inside because if you suck the very strong acid or the very strong base you are going to destroy the spring at the end of this uh, tube and that's how it is actually going to uh, uh, stop working or it will start showing the malfunctioning apart from this it is a good practice that uh, suppose uh, uh, currently i am using a pipette of 20 to 200 microliter but uh, suppose I am withdrawing the liquid which is around 100 microliter and I am doing all this for the whole day but it is always desirable and uh, recommended that by the end of the day when you leave the lab uh, you should put this pipette back to its maximum position for example in this case the pipette is from 20 to 200 microliter but I have right now dispensing the liquid which is equivalent to 100 microliter so what i'll do is by the end of this uh, today or by the end of the day when you are going to leave the lab you are going to dispense or you are going to 
uh, rotate the, the you know the tunnel tube uh, turning knob and bring it to the 200 microliter so that by doing so when you turn it to the 200 microliter you are actually going to reduce the tension which is there on the spring because when you are bring it, it to the 100 microliter you are bringing to a tension to the spring and that's how it is actually uh, uh, it is actually pushing little less okay so at 200 microliter the spring is going to be in a relaxed position so once it is, you are not using it it should be at the relaxed position so that the spring what is being used to work as a uh, sucking uh, device in this uh, pipette should last for longer period of time so with these precautions if you use this pipette you will be able to uh, you will be able to dispense the liquid more accurately and you will be able to perform the experiments more smoothly what we have discussed we have discussed just so far about the different types of uh, automatic pipettes which you can use to deliver the liquids but these pipettes are actually being used only up to the uh, up to the level of like a uh, few mls but if you are interested to uh, to uh, to dispense the liquids of the higher volumes you can use even the glass pipette connected to the uh, to the automatic uh, pipetter or the manual pipetters but before getting into the details of the glass pipettes i would also like to show you uh, another multi another pipettes which people are very oftenly use for performing the cell culture based assays so this pipette is called as the multi-channel pipette so what you can see is that this pipette has the eight different nozzles so that you can be able to withdraw the same amount of the liquid for eight different tips and that's how it actually expedite the process so in most of the pharma companies or the bio bio technology companies where the scientists are performing the cell based assays to screen the compounds or even the other kinds of applications you are using this kind of multi channel pipettes the basic principle or the working principle is remain the same that you have to set the uh, the volume which you would like to withdraw and then you have to press the plungers and then you have to dip it all the tips into the media or the reagent which you are interested to add to the cell culture dishes and then you have to dispense it according to the same volume, same way and then it has a, uh, a, a ejector which actually can be used to eject all the eight uh, tips at the same time and then you can actually you know attach a few more new new uh, new tips and can be able to dispense the liquid and perform the cell based assay so that this kind of multi channel pipettes actually reduces your efforts to uh, finish the work and also it actually saves the time and the um, effort from the human being so apart from this if you are interested to dispense the large quantity of the, uh, the uh, liquid to uh, even suppose you want to feed the cells with a large quantity of the liquid like liquid media uh, like 5 ml 10 ml 20 ml and 25 ml then you can use the glass pipettes so it is uh, so this is a typical glass pipette which is a 10 ml glass pipette and the only thing what you have to do is uh, when you are basically trying to use this pipette for dispensing the large volume liquids uh, you cannot do the mouth sucking because if you do the mouth sucking uh, the most of the corrosive liquids or other kinds of liquids can actually uh, directly get into the mouth so that's why it is not advisable to use the glass pipette with the mouth sucking instead of mouth sucking you can use the pipetters so uh, which actually can do the same job and it can actually uh, used uh, more uh, you know with more safety and it can be more uh, it, it gives more uh, you know uh, useful or reliable so you have the two different types of pipetters one is called as the manual pipetter where you have a manual uh, where, where you have the body and you have a plunger which if you if you if you if you, uh, if you run this uh, wheel uh, what will happen is this plunger goes in the up upward directions and and that's how it actually can suck the liquid and once you are done with this you can actually press this uh, 
plunger and that's how it actually going to withdraw the liquids so let's see how to use this uh, manual pipette so first you have to do is you have to connect this uh, glass pipette to your pipetter and make sure that there is a no leakage of the air because the working principle remain the same whether it is a uh, automatic pipette or the manual pipetter for the uh, sucking the liquid because if there is a be a if there will be a gap between the glass and uh, the pipette then the, it is going to suck the air instead of sucking the liquid so once it is connected tightly then what you can draw what you can do is uh, suppose we have to withdraw the liquid from a bottle and uh, so you can dispense or you can submerge this tip into the liquid and then you slowly turn this knob so that this rod will go in the upward direction and then what you see is that it is actually sucking the liquid into this pipette and since we have maintained a, the vacuum the liquid will not fall so then what you can do is uh, you can bring the liquid to the zero position simply by turning this knob in a reverse direction and what you can see now is that there is a level of the liquid up to the zero and when you are seeing this kind of liquid what you have to see is the lower end of the meniscus because what you see is there is a meniscus or there is a bubble a half bubble and the half bubble has the side corners and the middle depression so ideally people accept that you should use you should be able to see the lower end of the meniscus and that is the accurate position of uh, knowing that it is reached to the zero point or not so once it is reached to the zero point and suppose i have to dispense the 4 ml what i can do is i can just simply press this button and that actually will start uh, dispensing the liquid and that's how when it reaches the 4 you can just stop it what you have to do is always bring the glass to next to your uh, see uh, eye level so that you will be able to see the meniscus very accurately so now once you are done all the with uh, pipetting then you can just release the vacuum and that's how actually it is going to uh, with, uh, it is going to dispense the liquid to what you can see is now we have a very last drop of the liquid left in the pipette so to dispense that what you can do is you can just simply turn this rod down and that's how it is actually going to dispense even the last drop of the liquid from the pipette so this is the manual pipetter what you can use to dispense the liquid but in many cases when the manual pipetter is actually very very uh, you know tiring and it is very taking a lot of time because you have to every time you have to use this uh, wheel to you know suck the liquid and then you dispense the liquid to avoid that people are also using the automatic pipetter the, the working principle remains the same that in a IP automatic pipetter you have the two buttons one is to draw the to suck the liquid in the upward direction which is this button okay and the second is the pipe second uh, button which is actually going to release the uh, vacuum so that the uh, the liquid is going to be fall from the pipette so 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 the mechanism remain the same you have to first connect your pipette very tightly to the tubing of this or the uh, tubing of this pipetter and then you have to suck the dispel uh, submerge the uh, lower end of the pipette into the glass into the into the liquid and then you press this button and it is actually going to withdraw the liquid from the uh, from the uh, from the from the bottle and then what you have to do the exactly the same you have to use the uh, other end and make sure that the uh, the liquid reaches to the zero point and then you can just press this button the lower button and that actually is going to release the liquid into the your uh, reagent or your cell culture vial or something okay and that's how you can be able to do the pipetting in both in this pipetting you have a filter which is connected to this body and that filter is connected to a vacuum pump so when you press this knob it actually runs the vacuum pump so if, if it runs the vacuum pump in a 
in a clockwise direction it actually sucks the liquid if you run the vacuum in a reverse direction then it actually releases the vacuum and that's how it actually actually sucks the liquid from the uh, your bottle with the help of the glass pipette um, since this pipetter is always been or mostly been used in the cell culture facilities where you are actually dispensing the liquid into the cell culture this pipetter also has the 0.22 micron filter attached to this so that you should not when you are actually pouring the liquid liquid into the cell culture uh, dishes you should not pour the air or which should not pour the bacteria because of that you should not suck the liquid beyond this otherwise if the liquid will go into the filter the filter is going to be blocked and then you will not be able to suck the liquid anymore so to avoid any kind of clogging you have to ensure that you should suck the liquid only up to the uh, this point and because that is good enough for you to maintain the uh, you know the uh, the point at 10 uh, zero point okay and that's how you can be able to avoid the clogging of the filter so this is all about the different types of liquid handling system what we use in our lab in in the laboratory to handle there are different types of solvents whether it is a cell culture solvent or the corrosive acids in both the cases you have to you have the different options to use the different types of liquid handling systems now let's move on to the next uh, system and next system is called as the ph meter so this is a typical ph meter what you are probably uh, might have used or you might be uh, seen in your laboratory so in a typical ph meter what you have is ph meters are either been made up of of the plastic body or to the glass body depending on the different types of pipe, uh, ph meter what we have and in a pH meter what you have is you have a, a body or a processing units of, which is actually just been used for the display purpose and then you have the electrode which actually is used to uh, measure the pH. In the pH electrode what you have is you have the two different electrodes. You have an internal electrode which actually supplies a voltage based on the pH value of the sample. So you have uh, a pH internal elements which actually going to respond to the number of hydrogen ions present within the solution and then you have the internal reference electrode which actually going to supply at the constant equilibrium voltage. Apart from that you are also going to have the sensing membrane glass. So you are going to have a sensing membrane which actually allows the selective movement of the hydrogen ion into the pH probe so that it would be able to generate the voltage and it could be that voltage can be used to measure the pH of that particular pH electrode. So how the pH is actually uh, measuring the pH of a solution is that pH measurement requires the two electrode, a pH independent electrode sensitive to the uh, H plus ion. So this is this electrode and then you have a pH independent calomel reference electrode which is this one. And what happen is when you dip the pH uh, probe into a solution, it actually causes a potential difference between this electrode and between this electrode. So this potential difference between the two electrode can be measured in the form of voltage and this voltage is always been given in the form of an equation which is called as V is equal to E constant plus 2.303 RT by F and the pH. So where the V is the voltage of the complete circuit which means the voltage of the, uh, the uh, full circle then E constant is the potential of the reference electrode which means the voltage of this particular reference electrode, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature and F is the Faraday constant. So the voltage difference is what you are actually going to measure and that can be converted into the pH of that respective solution and that is going to be displayed by the display unit. But the pH meter has to be operated with a multiple steps and let us discuss that. 
So, in a pH meter as I said you know you have a pH electrode and this pH electrode is going to be dipped into the solution where you are actually interested to measure the pH. But before to doing that because the, this pH electrode only knows that what is the voltage difference between the internal electrode versus the reference electrodes. So, this V has to be calibrated with the help of the different pH solutions and uh, then only the uh, pH electrode will know that what pH they are actually measuring. So, for that purpose the first what you have to do is you have to turn on the machine, you have to dip it into the different standard pH solutions and then you have to measure. So, the pH standard what you are going to use is the 4, 7 and 9.2. And these are the three pH solutions you can use, uh, the standard pH solution you can use to calibrate the pH. So, if you are working in the acidic region, you can simply use the 4 and 7 and that should be good enough. But if you are working in the basic range, then you can use the 7 and 9.2. Uh, and uh, by using this, you are actually going to calibrate the uh, pH meter and then you can dip the pH probe into your uh, uh, buffer or the solution where you are interested to measure the pH and then it has to be completely submerged into the liquid and then it will actually going to give you the pH of that particular solution. So, it looks very simple that you have to do all this, but when you are going to operate the pH meter, you have to take multiple uh, uh, precautions as well as you have to be very careful when you are handling the pH probe because it is very susceptible for multiple types of damages because the body is made up of, of glass and as well as this membrane is very sensitive for the different types of reactions or different types of uh, treatment what you are going to do within the solutions. So, let us uh, see how to operate a pH meter. So, when you go with the pH meter, the pH meter uh, uh, has a central unit which actually is a kind of a display unit as well as the controlling unit. So, this display as well as the controlling unit is going to show you two informations. One which the top what you see is the pH of this solution where the pH uh, probe is being kept and the lower side what you see is actually the temperature of the solution where you are using this. So, as you can see the these two information are important that is why in the all uh, modern uh, pH meters you always have the two probes one is the probe which is actually the pH probe which you are going to use for uh, measuring the pH. So, what you can see is it is a glass tube and at the bottom of the glass tube you have a membrane and because and the, the glass tube is being protected by a plastic covering so that you, by even if by accidentally it is going to hit the magnetic bar magnetic bars or some other kind of uh, the liquids it should not get broken down because the membrane the semi permeable membrane is present onto this bulb what you see but and that bulb is being protected by the plastic cap so that it should not that bulb should not hit the solutions. So, uh, before you start the measuring the pH meter and suppose you have turned on the pH meter in the morning, what the first thing what you have to do is you have to calibrate the pH meter. In case you have turned on the pH, turn off the pH meter the day before and uh, the first thing what you have to do is you have to measure the pH meter. Uh, the you have to uh, you have to calibrate the pH meter utilizing the different uh, solutions and uh, the uh, by do, uh, how to do that actually so you can easily buy the standard pH solutions from the companies so what what the companies are doing they are giving you the standard pH solutions of different pH for example in our lab we are using the uh, the pH capsule. So, what you can see is it is a pH capsule of pH 4. So, what you have to do is you have to take this one capsule and dissolve it into 100 ml of the water and once you dissolve it completely it is actually going to give you the pH 4 at the temperature 25. Similarly, we have the uh, capsule for pH 7 and you have also have the uh, capsule for the pH 10 because what you are supposed to do is you have to calibrate the uh, the uh, pH meter 
in a range where you are uh, more oftenly using the uh, buffers. For example, if you are using the buffers of pH 5 or 6, you can use the pH 4 and 7 or sometimes you even you can use the pH 10 as well so that you are going to do the three point calibrations. So when you want to calibrate the pH uh, meter, what you are supposed to do is you are going to make the solution of the individual standard solutions and then you incubate or you put your probe into that standard solutions and then what you do is there is a there is a button for um, the calibrating the pH meter so you can just press this button and once you press this button it actually will going to ask you what kind of pH solution you are or what kind of standard pH solution you are immersing so you can set that okay I have put the four uh, pH 4 standard solutions so it will take up the that that particular solution as a pH 4 solution then once that pH 4 is over then you can take up the pH 7 and then subsequently it can, you can take up the pH 10 so by doing all the three point calibrations it is actually going to draw the calibration curves of utilizing the standard pH and it is at the end it is actually going to give you the correlation curve or it is going to give you the correlation factors in most of the calibrations when you are doing the three point calibrations you should get a reading of more than 95 percent which means the pH what you are going to measure utilizing this pH meter after the calibration is going to be 95 to 99 percent accurate and that is very important uh, to do so and that has to be done uh, the uh, at a particular temperature in which your buffer solution is also present uh, so uh, suppose you are going to withdraw this liquid from the fridge or suppose you have prepared a buffer and it has been kept in fridge it is always desirable that or it is always recommended that you first take out the solution bring it to the room temperature and then only you measure the pH so and then only you maintain the pH also so all the solution has to be at 25 degrees Celsius because you you have calibrated the pH meter at that particular temperature so it is that curve or the calibration curve what you have drawn utilizing the three different pH solutions of 4 7 and 10 is only holding at the temperature 25 now once your calibration is over then what you can do is you can uh, you can uh, take your probe and immerse it into the liquid in which you are in uh, stand you are interested to measure the pH and then you can use that solution to uh, th then you can use uh, the uh, depending on the pH for example if it is showing a pH 5 and you are interested to make a buffer of pH 7.4 or 7.9 suppose you are maintaining a tris pH or tris buffer and you are it is showing a pH of 5 then you can add the uh, the uh, corresponding base uh, to maintain the pH uh, in some cases you can add the NaOH in some cases you can add the acid to uh, either decrease or increase the pH and that's how you can be able to maintain the pH uh, while you are doing so you have to be very cautious that the magnetic bead what you are going to use uh, should not be uh, should not be very close to the magnetic uh, to the probe so suppose for example I am I am trying to measure the pH of this uh, particular solution so what I will do is I will put the beads into the solution I will start the uh, the magnetic stirrer so that the solution is going to be mixed up but what you are supposed to do is suppose i i measure the ph okay so it is showing a ph of 8.5 which means i and suppose i am i would like to maintain the ph of 7.4 so what i'll do is i'll add the some amount of um, uh, hcl or the acid so that the ph will come down to 7.4 so to maintain the ph at 7.4 what i'll do is i'll add the small amount of acid so the first thing what you have to do is while you are adding the solution for maintaining the pH what you have to do is you have to add this liquid the, the acid or whatever the liquid you are adding very far away from the probe which means 
it should not be added next to the probe because if you add the acid or the base next to the probe first of all it is going to affect the membrane what is being present into the probe which is actually been responsible for exchange of protons and that is the way it is actually measuring the ph uh, the other point is that if you are um, adding a very corrosive uh, uh, acid or the base very close to the probe it is actually going to change the ph very drastically and that's how it is actually going to give you the wrong readings but uh, so and also you should not measure the ph instantly okay you should wait for the magnetic bead to run for an additional one or two minutes so that the all the acid what you have added is going to be mixed up completely and it is going to make the homogeneous solution because if the hydrogen ions are not evenly distributed throughout the solutions it is actually not going to give you the accurate ph of the solutions it is actually going to give you the ph of that particular instant moment next to the probe and that actually is going to give you the inaccurate reading then you can keep adding the acid or the base as long as you are not going to get the desired results once you got the desirable results and you are done with the ph meter what you are supposed to do is you are going to remove your probe okay and uh, you have to wash the probe before you uh, going to uh, do anything else and uh, you have to wash it very thoroughly so that all the uh, acid or base what you have used in this uh, uh, pH maintaining process should be removed from the probe all the uh, buffers, uh, salt, everything should be removed and once you are done with that what you have to do is you have to take a tissue paper and you have to wipe the tube and the, the, the lower bulb you are supposed to remove the whole liquid but uh, you should not touch it with the uh, very harshly or very strongly you have to just uh, touch the tissue paper to the cover and that actually is going to withdraw all the liquid and that's how it is going to be very very protected from the any kind of damages because this bulb what you see in the probe is very very sensitive and once you are done with that you just put it into the cover and this is the three molar KCL solutions and as soon as you are done by the end of the day you have to pour this uh, probe into the uh, the three molar KCL solutions and you have to store the probe into this three molar KCL solutions so that the probe should not experience or should not be get uh, uh, should not be get uh, uh, the should not be get um, dried up so you have to just use that like that and then it should be ready for the storage so apart from this pH probe you also have the um, the um, this temperature probe so this is the temperature probe but you have to also immerse into the liquid for me measuring the pH at very accurately at the particular pH temperature so uh, so if you work very uh, very nicely with the pH meter it is actually going to give you the uh, uh, the accurate pH and if you maintain or if you take all the precautions you don't let the probe to be get dried up and apart from that since these probes are only meant for measuring the pH of the solutions you should never use these pH uh, probes for uh, measuring the pH of any kind of proteinaceous uh, solution. For example, you cannot use it for maintaining the pH of a microbiology media or the cell culture media or the animal cell culture media because of the only reason that the microbiology media or the animal cell culture media contains very large quantity of proteins or the amino acids. And the protein or the amino acid are going to choke the membrane which is responsible for the proton exchange from the pro electrode so once the membrane is going to be blocked it is not going to perform the proton exchange and that is what you are going to so that's the way you are going to destroy the probe and then you you have no other option but to change the probe with the new probe
so with all these precautions if you use the ph meter you will be able to perform the research very nicely in your laboratory now once you have uh, understand the operation of a ph meter you could understand that there are multiple uh, precautions what you have to take and there are multiple ways in which you have to maintain the pH probe otherwise it is going to give you the erroneous pH results apart from even if before, without even if you take these precautions uh, the pH meter is still can be able to give you the uh, pH of the uh, you know it can give you a multi, uh, wrong pH and there are multiple reason of giving you one of the major reason is that it is actually going to show you a sodium error so sodium error is actually happening because you are measuring the ph in a range of the 12 to 14 so if you measuring a ph in the alkaline region it is actually going to cause you a sodium error and because of the sodium error the ph what you are going to measure is going to have a deficiency of 0.4 to 0.5 uh, units which means if i am measuring a ph of 12 it could be 12.5 or it could be 11.5 so this means that it is actually very very uh, big uh, error and it happens uh, at a very basic or alkaline pH level where the hydrogen ion concentration is relatively low compared to the sodium ion concentration in the sample and that is what it is going to show you the sodium error. Uh, why the, there is a sodium error? Why it actually causes into the solution? It happens because the sodium uh, level is relatively so high that the, the H plus ion in the gel layer around the sensitive electrode membranes are replaced by the sodium ions. So it happens is because you have a pH probe and to this membrane it actually is only allowing the H plus ion but because you have such a high level of sodium uh, into the solution because you know that at pH uh, uh, 13 or 14 you are going if you suppose I am taking a solution of NaOH the, uh, the concentration of the Na plus is going to be so high that uh, the H plus ion are going to be so little that the uh, pH probe is actually going to give me a very you know, erroneous pH. Uh, the electrode may eventually respond to sodium ions instead of the hydrogen ion because there are so many high concentration of sodium the electrode is actually started responding to the sodium ions and instead of giving the pH uh, relative to the hydrogen ion concentrations and that is why it is actually giving the falsely lower pH value than the real results. How to avoid that? You can avoid that simply by uh, either checking the limit of your pH electrode. Most will state the pH range they are able to cover and may state with uh, and eventually this is at pH 12 or over. Then you measure the alkaline solution at room temperature where possible because if you have the high temperature that actually is going to increase the uh, sodium effects because if you have high temperature that eventually going to change the dissociation constant of that particular solution and that actually is going to increase even the sodium level further up. Uh, apart from that you always should avoid using the uh, p, uh, solution of very high uh, pH solutions and in some cases what people do is people are actually trying to uh, optimize the uh, or calibrate the, uh, the pH electrodes even at a high values or high uh, in, in an alkaline range. And, uh, and then they are actually trying to calculate the error percentage and that is actually they are considering while they are making a pH or while they are measuring the pH of the uh, buffer solutions where the pH is above 12. Apart from that you also have the temperature effects which means the temperature is going to change the buffer. So why the pH of the buffer is influenced by the temperature? because of this equation that you have already discussed that the V is E constant plus 2.3 RT by F. One parameter what you see is actually the temperature. So if you change the temperature it actually going to change two things. One it is actually going to change the dissociation of the solution. So it is actually going to change the dissociation constant of that particular 
compound what is being dissolved into the buffer and as a result it actually going to increase the dissociation of that particular compound. So, instead of having the normal uh, di dissociation it is going to dissociate more and because of that the resultant amount of ions are going to be more and you know that the pH is directly proportional to the number of ions what is present in the solutions. So, it occurs why the temperature because it changes the dissociation constant or the pK of the ions in the solutions. You can take an example for example, if you if you prepare a tris buffer uh, and so you are going to see a change in the 0 0.03 pK per degree Celsius. It means if you prepare a pH of 7 the tris buffer made up of at 4 degree would have a pH of 5.95 at 37 degrees Celsius which means there is a huge change in the pH values if you are changing the temperature of that particular solution and that is why it is important that you should prepare the buffers at the same temperature where you have actually kept the electrodes. So, how to avoid that to avoid this problem prepare the buffer solution at a temperature at which it is going to be used and to standardize the electrode with the buffer at the same temperature at the solution you wish to measure. Which means if you are interested to measure the pH at 4 degree then you have to calibrate the electrode with the 4 degree solutions of 4, 7 and 9.2 and that actually is going to give you the more accurate results or I will say it is actually going to decrease the percentage error in the uh, pH electrodes. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here, thank you.